thousands of amateur radio operators, TAMs, prepared for their first man in space. On orbit day three, excitement peaked among hams all over the world. And then amateur radio's man in space went on the air. This is W5LFL in Columbia. W5LFL in Columbia orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 135 nautical miles. Passing over the U.S. West Coast and calling CQ. So W5LFL in Columbia is calling CQ and uh, standing by. Go ahead. W5LFL, WA1JXN, WA1 Japan, X-ray Norway, Frenchtown, Montana. WA1JXN, standing by. Hello, W1JXN. Uh, this is W5LFL. I uh, picked up your signals uh, fairly weakly. I think our attitude is not really the, ve the best as yet, but uh, you're our first contact from uh, orbit. Uh, WA1, Juliet, X-ray, November. One of the degrees that I got in college was in physics. So I've always been interested in science and I've always been interested in nature. My activities in ham radio have really kept my interests in technical things and in natural phenomena going throughout my life. Even though my work life may have been involved in marketing or business and things like that. So it's been a great outlet for me that way. It seems to bring the news or the word right here. I can hear that right now. I can hear the emergency action messages from the Air Force to our nuclear forces. Uh, airliners overseas, flying over the ocean, that sort of makes me feel like I'm back in the airplane again. I, that's what I did, same frequencies, same reports, and just sometimes just to see what's out there. I've only been here for five years. All of the amateurs that I have met in my time here are fantastic people. They are giving, they are welcoming, they, are, they share the whole fraternity, camaraderie, but I've tried to do the same thing. Uh, some of these are people that are new into the hobby and I've tried to help them find equipment, help them with antennas. I'm trying to promote amateur radio. I'm not involved in an amateur radio club mainly because I can't keep the schedules. I, I, I don't want to be involved in something that I know I'm not going to be faithful to. There are about one million and a half radio amateurs in the world, all licensed by their, their governments to operate on assigned frequencies that are agreed to internationally. The advantages, of course, of uh, being able to do this is that we radio amateurs are the only group of, of citizens in the world who can communicate freely across international borders, speaking with one another from the privacy of our own homes using our own equipment.
There's very, very small sections of ham radio, like I'm interested in moon bounce. And for years, I've bounced radio signals off the moon to contact people on the other side of the Earth. Moon bounce has always been intriguing to me. Even when I was a teenager, I thought, wow, that's amazing to send a signal to the moon and have it come back two and a half seconds later. When I finally moved out of Cleveland and bought a house in Vermont, I actually put up an antenna for moon bounce and made my first contacts. The people who are mentors, we call them Elmers. What I've tried to do is be an Elmer and help other people who are interested in six meters and explain the best way for them to get going on six meter moon bounces. This is Grace. Goodbye, moon. I've had fun ever since. Okay, Alpha Lima 7, go ahead. Alpha Lima 7, Kilo Charlie, hello. Hi, uh, AL7 uh, Kilowatt Charlie, uh, Alpha Lima 7, Kilo Charlie, this is KR7Q. Uh, you are 5 and 7 in western Montana. Uh, my park reference is K0402, and I hope that you're probably in Alaska. Over. Okay, thank you for the Alaska contact. 73 AL7 KC KR7Q. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, the activation. Appreciate it. 73 and uh, enjoy the activation. Jeez, that's <laughs> Lance again. Jeez, Louise. Continuous wave propagation is Morse code. We call it CW. I, I got to the place where using a microphone and talking to other people, I got disenchanted with it. It's like it, it just kind of lost its pizzazz. I, it just, you, know, you know how when you're in something and you can get to a level where been there, done that, and I, I need something more. And that's where this came in, Morse code. And that's the only thing, you hear that and you send that. Generally, because of what it takes to operate a, a CW station, CW operators or Morse code operators are far more experienced and better at what they do. They're better radio operators. And when the guy in Russia I'm talking to uh, wants to tell me what the weather is, he'll say WX and he'll say 32, or uh, meaning 32 degrees F Fahrenheit, or uh, minus 2 C. Uh, rig, he'll go RIG. Rig is 100, 100 W, 100 watts. Uh, antenna is uh, 3, he'll, he'll just say 3 ELE, -E, meaning element, Yagi, at 10 meters. I know everything about his station. I know his weather, blah, blah, blah. And that's pretty much the extent. And I get it, I get it all via Morse code. And so that's how I got into amateur radio, and that's what has kept me in amateur radio. I, you know what, it's, it's like certain times when I point that antenna northeast, all of those European signals come over the pole. And as they do, they have a warble to them. It's like, you know, they don't sound the same as some guy in Virginia or something. The guy in Virginia, his, no, his tone is going to be solid and no warble or anything. But that one, that's DX. A lot of time, DX meaning long distance. A lot of times it's because the signal has skipped twice. 
uh, and uh, we make the contact with people all over the world and I really got into it. That's why I got so many of these QSL cards and, and that type of thing. Ham radio operators, after they've talked on the air, sometimes, not always, exchange QSL cards in the mail and it has information about the event, who made the contact, where, the time, the frequency. And sometimes people can use these as proof that they actually had contact with a rare country. All these QSL cards are from uh, places where I've operated moon bounce. Like this, you here you can see Karen in this one. She's snorkeling. That was in Nue. And Clipperton is the only de expedition that I've done where I operated from an uninhabited island. When a ham radio pers person or group of people go out to activate a spot that's a long way away, the trip, the expedition to go do that, we call them de-expeditions. These uh, de-expeditions that people do, that ham radio people do, are just either just to have fun or to activate a state or to activate a new country. In 2007, after I recovered from a near-death experience with cancer, I decided it would be fun to give back to the community uh, by activating some of these rare countries that had never been activated that people were interested to contact. Those activations have been very exciting. Da, 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 da. Perfecto mundo. It's very exciting to be able to give people these contacts, uh, whether they're rare grids in the United States, or whether you're going to do moon bounce from a strange island in, in the Pacific or the Indian Ocean. It's just neat to be able to be connected with people that way. It is a technical hobby, but it's not one that uh, is that really should scare people away. Uh, most amateurs today uh, uh, are using equipment which is manufactured. They assemble it in into a station which meets their particular needs, but this isn't any different than, for example, the hi-fi enthusiast who has a wide variety of equipment available and puts together the components that uh, meets his particular needs. And I don't think most of us regard hi-fi as being that technical that, we'd, that we would shy away from it for that reason. I just made my first transmission. I, the radio was waiting for uh, the signal, uh, the frequency to be clear for me to make a transmission. Okay, he didn't answer me, so I, I will call it. I'm calling him again now. Okay, well, this guy is on fourteen three forty seven. I have to change the antennas. I'm going to move my antenna. One thing that concerns me is that when you go to ham radio events like swap meets or go to the amateur radio clubs, the overwhelming majority of people are probably over 65. That's him. I would go back to him. But I'm but it's not working. Well, signals look terrible, that's why. Often the signals just, if they're, if you're too close to them, <laughs> they'll skip over you. And that's what's happening here. I'm trying to find a good example for you, but. Every time you operate the radio, it's a training exercise so that you, you can do it better each time. 
some reason it's not keying the radio. I'll have to work on that on my own and tear everything apart and find out why it's not working anymore. Well, getting gray and getting new people in the hobby is uh, is kind of a tough sell. There's a lot of other competition with the internet and cell phones and cell phone apps. Well, it doesn't look like I'm being real successful here, folks. Oh, there we go. Well, I got the VA too. Oh, well, now everybody wants to talk to me. People get the idea that amateur radio is dying. Some of us are, we're, you know, we're going to die eventually, but hopefully we have left a legacy of interest, maybe not like what I do, but in other areas that technology affects amateur radio. I am not ready to say that amateur radio is dying. I will say that it's evolving. I have friends that I made uh, 45 years ago that are still very close friends. Even though I've moved, we communicate via radio, we keep in touch, that's a big deal. I'm hoping that we can pass that spirit of fraternity and community and friendship on to the next generation. And usually everybody understands that to get here, you had to make some kind of an investment, an investment of your time to get your license. And then the first time you get on the air and you pick up the microphone, that's an intrepidating experience. I remember, man, these, all these other guys that have been in it forever, what if I make a mistake? What if I say something stupid? And they think, well, you got to put all that in your hip pocket. Hello, CQ, this is KR7Q. That's where you start. And, and from that point, relationships start building. Let me see. Anybody listening on 5-2 Simplex today, KR7Q? <laughs> That's Lance. W7GJ. Is that you, Lance, KR7Q? <laughs> Let me see if I can get the house turned around here a little bit and point it at you. Are you copying me, Lance? Over. Okay, I think I've got the antenna pointed on you now. I'm in the Bitterroot Valley, as you know, and I have the film crew here. We've been using your name in vain on a couple of topics. Over. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Well, we're having a great time, and let's see, you are in Frenchtown, is that right? The reason our signals are not real good between us is I have a very big uh, ridge between me and Missoula and uh, that makes it difficult to be able to get a signal to where you are at on the line of sight. I'm using a uh, five element cubicle quad that I built and without that I would never ever be able to hear you uh, on the vertical antenna. So this is great that we're able to make contact. Okay, Lance, very good. Thank you. I've got a real good copy on you now. A uh, little bit of static, but a good copy. I enjoy the work that you do. I, 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 I can't even spell E-M-E. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, it's always fascinating. But uh, anyway, thanks for uh, being there for us. A W7 uh, Grape Juice, W7GJ, KR7Q, 73. That's great. 
that might stir up somebody else. Anybody else listening on frequency? KR7Q. And there's the old dog himself. How you doing, K7MSO? I'll see if I can turn the house around a little bit. I got all your friends from uh, the college here. Over. That was a lot of fun. I really made my lost I would think. Having them come by and do their thing. And uh, not much going on here today. Just kind of cleaning things up. Over. Very good. Well, thank you for... Uh, uh, putting us in contact together. Anyway, uh, Mike, uh, we're going to make sure that uh, Grace here uh, follows through with her commitment to get her licensed, okay? Okay, yeah, I've talked to different people. Uh, we've made it a priority to help her in any way we can. That's, uh, that's wonderful. And uh, good luck on that, Grace. I hope to see you soon on that. I'll let you guys get back to chat. Uh, this is K7MSO in the village. Thanks again for your input on this. 73, uh, K7MSO, KR7Q. See you later. Okay, that's it for me. KR7Q, clear and listening. Well, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And uh, you see what I mean? This is fun. It is fun. It is fun. It's amazing, you know, the friends that you have from all over the world. I presented at a conference outside of London 10 years ago or so, and I roomed in England with a friend of mine from South Africa. And we still keep in touch, and we still make contacts on Moonbounce when I go out on de-expeditions. You know, it's just, so wonderful to have these friends everywhere. You know, it is a worldwide community and we do feel close ties to our friends in other countries. And it's a wonderful way to, to, to bring the world together.